Terry, my phone has been ringing off the hook today. You've just done a flow through, basically at 90 cents to raise 2.75 million at 90 cents. And your stock is currently trading at just under 30. Can you tell us how you pulled this off? Well, you know, it's it's um, with our, um, you know, feasibility study partner, CVMR Corporation. So so they're in it for the long term. They're they're <clears throat> they're working with us. Uh, evaluating the project and uh, they see the bigger picture. And of course we know our 43101 is going to be delivered next week. So this is a significant um, dilution, obviously from the company perspective. So, you know, it just became a negotiating thing. That was what's fair for both sides. That makes uh, sense. Right. You know, we, we, we didn't want to uh, dilute at our current, right. Because it's very ridiculously priced for lots of reasons, but we know we got lots of good stuff coming out. They know that too. They're fair-minded, you know. It's it's a good relationship. So it's just a, a negotiation that worked for both sides, and uh, I think it's yeah. You know, we think we, they got a great deal, and and you know that's a better deal than you know what we would ordinarily get from anybody else. So it was good, still a good deal for us. So it was you know one of those things. Well, I I think the the larger point is that this is exactly what the Canadian government created flow through for. This is the model they wanted to build. They want to attract companies into investing into exploration plays. So obviously, CVMR, if you wouldn't mind taking some new investors or interested shareholders into your relationship and who is CVMR because they're a private company. Yep. So uh, CVMR is a uh, probably the largest private, to my knowledge, nickel uh in uh non-ferrous metal refiner uh that i'm aware of they have 18 plants around the world uh they have sometimes they go from mine to plant sometimes they're just the refinery but they they do an amazing job they 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 their specialty is a what's called chemical metal vapor processing so it's tmvp i guess um and and basically there's three ways to make nickel you can smelt it you can hydrometallurgy or you can use this chemical metal vapor process and uh, that's the least uh, most environmentally friendly least amount of energy used and so we liked it for from that perspective and uh, especially since we've got the energy with hydro quebec right nearby to make it work so it, it was we sort of met them uh met them through a friend banking friend of mine a uh, commercial banking friend of mine and um you know about a year ago and over time you know uh you know developed some trust and respect for what they did and what we did. And, and, uh, and we obviously cemented our deal initially in August of last year. And they've been working on uh, this phase of the study was basically to take the ore and put it through what they call benchmarking tests to uh, see how um, a process in their way, because, because it's quite a different process. And so it went very well. I mean, we'll get the, I mean, I've seen, obviously we've seen a, a number of, tests and we'll get the final report back in a couple of weeks but obviously we saw an, enough of it but both of us to be encouraged enough to go to the next stage uh so the next stage will be the uh fees uh the prototype stage which is a really critical stage where they'll actually build mock-ups of the actual what the facility would look like and they'll 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 you know uh grind the ore and bring it right through the process and, and make the finished product so so that'll be a, a really big uh, test for us but we're pretty excited about what we're seeing. And uh, uh, the the key thing I think for, I could go on for CVMR, so I don't want to <laughs> have a run on answer, but there there is some interesting aspects. We talked about it a bit in the press release. And it was something, honestly, I didn't know, um, you know, about this part of the world. So in, in nickel, I would say the refiners are gods. They decide what's going to come into their refinery and you're going to make the concentrate the way they like it, the way it maximizes profit for them. Okay. And the, the miners, they don't really have any choice. They got to do it because they, they have no, they can't go to a finished product. So in the concentrate business, you're going to leave somewhere, you know, a good concentrate. You're, you're probably going to get 70 to 80% of your nickel out. Okay. And uh, you're you're leaving the other 20, 30 percent in the waste stream. Um, and your byproducts, you're going to get some credit, 
probably for a copper, you might get 50%. For the PGMs, you're going to get 20%. You're not going to get a lot. Okay, so you, you, they kill you every step of the way. So that's their approach. And they've obviously ruled with it for you know hundreds of years at this point. But CBMR, because it produces a finished product, goes at things entirely differently. And so they they uh, their yields might be 92 to 95 percent. Okay, instead of uh, you know 75 or 72 or whatever, so you got that 20, <clears throat> and they their process is such that they actually you know whereas in our, in our or uh, in our or our mineralization, I, as I learned that my lawyer advised me, it's only or when it's in production, it's mineralization until then. So I have to watch my uh, my P's and Q's. So the mineralization is basically uh, it's 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 uh, it, it's it's associated with iron. So we have about 12% of our deposit would be iron. So that's a waste product in the nickel situation, in the nickel concentrate. But with a CDMR, they'll make it into uh, iron powders for four bucks a pound. So what happens is, is you know, our byproduct revenue is going to go up significantly. So, so we get more, you know, maybe an extra 20%. And then the byproduct revenue goes from just, you know, 20 to 50% and sometimes nothing to you know, max. So it's got a lot of, lot of potential. That's why we're so excited. And that's why they're excited because, you know, th they have uh, the magic uh, formula that can make that happen. And that's what, that's what's in it for them. Well, you know, it's interesting. I came into this interview, all hopped up over the, uh, the flow through aspect, but I've left a lot more interested in the mineralization. So are you telling me that QBMR really has the secret sauce for getting a higher concentrate level of nickel out. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I understand, you know, uh, is it's a, it's it's beneficial that we have the hydroelectric power because it does take power to make this work. And if you're in an area where power costs are uh, extremely expensive, this would not be a good process. But because we're in an area where the hydroelectric power is you know quite reasonable it's a very good process and so with that circumstance then we can move to these finished products in a very beneficial way for for them and for us that's my understanding well this morning i received a number of copies of the latest wall street journal article about how esg is no longer as big of a uh enthusiast for the mining industry I happen to disagree. So I want to draw everybody's attention to the fact that you have a broader vision of becoming Canada's first carbon neutral nickel mine. And you have been deploying all kinds of very innovative ways to do this. Can I ask you, are you on track for your timeline? Yeah, now more so than ever. And I, I think, you know, I get the, the, the industry's, you know, concern over ESG is, is that they see it as a cost center. You know, and it can be a cost center uh, it, and definitely will be a cost center, but it can be a re revenue center, too, because I think what's going to happen. And we believe fully that clean nickel is going to get paid a lot more than dirty nickel. So uh, so we happen to be by our nature of being in Quebec, being uh, blessed by having Hydro Quebec, you know, cross the road from us, uh, from having ultramafic rock, which naturally sequesters CO2. So we had some just, you know, just dumb luck. You know, we, the deposit is where you found it. It just so happened to be in Quebec by the hydro plant and it happened to have ultramatic rock. That wasn't anything a Terry engineer, you know, so that's just good luck. So, but any good business person takes advantage of his good breaks. So it's like, we can take that and then we can turn it into this, you know, uh, you know, you know, amazing opportunity to be the world's first uh, carbon neutral nickel mine. And that will, I think, get us higher revenue and more profitability for our shareholders. That's why we're doing it. And of course, it it, it fits into the environmental uh, tone of things, and it, we obviously are very tight with that. So that makes sense, you know. But you know, it's it's a uh, you know the the final element of our uh, approach there is, and we haven't really spent a lot of time talking about it. But we would, you know, working with CBR, build a recycling facility into it right from the outset. And we would take back the batteries at the end of the day. That, that's going to be a big business to take back the batteries and recycle and break them down. So you sort of have a cradle grave. That's one of the great things about nickel is it's very recyclable. Uh, so by doing that now, if you plan it now, it's probably an extra, 
I don't know, 15 million, five, six, seven percent of your capital cost. Whereas if you if you tried to build a, a recycling facility right out of the, right the hop, it's probably you know 10 times that. You know, not 15 million, but 150 million. So so by doing that, then you add those all those elements together, the green uh, energy from the Hydro Quebec uh, you know, uh power stations, the ultramafic deposit naturally sequestering the CO2, the using the you know, the low energy uh the the low carbon intensive uh, CVMR process, and then uh, adding the recycling facility gets us there, but also makes us, uh, you know, very profitable, we think. So that's that, you know, so it's, you know, the environment uh, doesn't have to hurt your uh, economics. Yeah, I think if you plan it properly, and I think that's what we're, that's what we're saying. Well, I think you're running out of daylight now. That may be one of your biggest <laughs> items. And and for the first time ever, I understand why you named yourself Power Nickel. So on that note, congratulations. And for everybody interested, please go to Power Nickel's website. It's getting updated every day. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Have a great night. Cheers.